They were in it. Hello. I think we wait just another minute or two, you think? Yeah, sounds good. All right, <laughs> should we <laughs> get started, I guess? Yep, I'm good with that. Four of us, we can probably get a good amount done here. Um, I was looking at the, I think you just copied it when you created this from the stuff we kind of talked about last time. I think it'd be probably good to just talk about a uh, timeline real quick, just to start, because that's probably going to be a fairly quick discussion. And then we can probably dive straight into like, let's define the top level manifest. What does it look like? I mean, we can even do that. I wouldn't know what you were thinking of doing with that, James. I was thinking like, even if we just pull up, you know, like a VS code window or something and start putting together the JSON and seeing what it looks like um, and going from there. Sounds good. So timeline wise, 
Um, it's just the four of us, but I think we can define this. I was honestly hoping if we can get this done in a month or two months to bef- not all done, like get it to the OCI working group within that time frame. That would be wonderful. Um, so that was kind of my thinking along this. I'm not sure what other people were thinking, but like I feel like the sooner the better. Um, with with a lot of this just so we can get the ball rolling because it's going to probably take discussions and back and forth for a while but that was my thought what did other people think i think it's it's not super urgent to fermion because we're already shipping something different so there's already going to be a migration for us um and then from the sort of packaging standpoint, I am hoping to ship something for sort of like developer packaging, uh, reusable components. I'm hoping to ship something very soon. So if we can get an alignment on just like the small subset of overlap between reusable components and runtime, like runnable components, uh, we could sort of prioritize that. I think it would be helpful in getting that done quickly. For my own yeah. clarification, um, Taylor, I think you said OCI working group. Did you mean the WASM working group? Uh, I mean, well, yes, we need to get approved. I was talking about from there, like getting the WASM working group to sign off on this and then passing out, like passing this up the chain essentially as a proposal to the to the OCI people, um, including you, um, to be like, hey, this is what we think, this is what we kind of came up with, and then get the feedback from there. Um, do you suggest a different way of doing it? I think given what you're doing, OCI will have no opinion. We'll just say you're you're following the spec as best we've defined the spec and feel free to use it as you're using it. That that's my suspicion. Um I can always be wrong. Um would that is there something to like I'm I'm leaning on in terms of we define like what this looks like for us, but we probably want this the actual specification itself to live somewhere. Um, is that something that we try to have live like in a, in a something related to the tag runtime, like the WASM working group side of things, or is there somewhere else those kind of like extensions on top of it belong? I just want to make sure it's discoverable and people know that like it was people came together and decided and voted on this kind of thing. Yeah, we've got places where we link off to like other groups doing things, but in terms of like for example, the Helm chart, when they define their stuff, they give us a heads up and say, hey, we're doing this and we pretty much stay hands off and they get to do whatever they want to do. And then the definition of the Helm chart remains with the Helm organization itself. In this case, we've got some of the design stuff we've been talking about. I imagine if you're going to label stuff that says that it's under the Byte Code Alliance vendor, it's going to be an artifact that's defined by them. And so the, the spec itself could live over there. And then OCI, if you want us to add a link, feel free to just give us a PR and say, hey, could you link over this thing for us? And we're usually pretty uh, pretty open to that, of saying, hey, here's another implementation that's using the OCI. Perfect. Thanks, Brandon. Um, so it so, sounds like, and I, I think that's one of the things I've struggled with this in general, is like, where, where does this spec actually live? So, I, and I think that comes down to the naming as well, but which is on, on the list today. Um, how do like Byte Code Alliance sounded like they kind of want to like maybe not have our have their name associated with it, but do we put the spec there? Do we put it in like the WASMs, like as part of like, uh, yeah, I just don't know where to live that where this lives. <clears throat> and I think that might become important once we kind of try to get this as a standard of some sort <clears throat> so we're we're getting into the naming things and the and the paying the bike shed stuff so i will leave that up for the group to decide yeah i think we can go back and talk because we might have to live for a little bit james along like in tag run time and then we'll see i'll, I'll talk to some people i'm at the plumber summit this week so i'll just see what people are thinking um on the first thing um, in terms of deliverables, I just want to get it done so people know and can start planning. That was my thinking land, like, because we, we also have the same problem with, like, Wasm Cloud, right? Like, we have our own thing that we're doing, 
but also like I'd love to have the thing that we can all we've all agreed on we should be doing so that I can like start planning the, the how we're going to do it over whatever course of time so the sooner we get it done the easier it is for all of us to start putting it into our roadmaps and including that in the work we do so that was the the kind of thinking so like I'm not in like a rush but I also don't want to like drag it out that was my my kind of thinking Yes, same here for, for that because we'd have to change container D and I would like to <clears throat> bake it into container D in a more official pattern than what we have right now. Um, and so the sooner we get something that we generally agree on, the better. Just as a comment on the sort of organizational question, it might make sense for it to go under WASI, which is sort of somewhere between WebAssembly and Bytecode Alliance. Uh, they're all sort of smushed together, but it's kind of a little bit independent of both. Okay. Uh, so I think I think we shoot the last month or two games. I'm hoping we can bring down very pretty quick, but I think we'll have to maybe re reevaluate once we start just working on like what does the top level manifest look like here. And if we can even get like a rough view of what that could look like and then feedback out to people and then uh, send it out to people for feedback, then I think we know. Okay, sounds good. Let's start burning it down then. <laughs> um, I am remote, so I don't have multiple monitors. So if someone else could drive the actual, I can, contribute but like i'll have to be like swiping between things and not be able to see the the chat so if someone can whom is at a place with multiple monitors could maybe pull up the and copy paste it what james would put together in the doc that'd be great i am going to that doc just for lazy purposes yeah i can um share screen i can share screen okay I'll make sure I've got the notes over here too. Do we want to just edit it right here? Or do you want to pull it out or just? Sorry, I muted myself. Um, I don't know if you, I'm fine with that. If you wanted to, I didn't know if you wanted to keep this for like historical purposes or not, but I'm fine editing it right here. Yeah, I mean, I, I treat this more as a working doc and you can. Um, so I know we had already had like initial conversations about the media type. I'm per, I, I actually kind of like this. Um, we could do, we have the bite code alliance thing and that's the discussion there. So we could do like WASI um, instead. We could do like VND WASI, .wasm or something like that if we're, if we're worried about it. But once again, I have to talk to people here and figure out if they're gonna be like, nope, bad idea. But like Lan said, WASI kind of is right in the middle. So <laughs> The other advantage of WASI in the short term is that it's less letters. Yeah, my four fingers, thank you. Um, so may maybe let's just do that. Is, would it be VND Wazi, Wazum, Wazum? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem right, but. Um, there was. I'm not sure what the, that the plus Wazum makes sense here in terms of a media type. Uh, because the content type is not a WASM binary or anything. Um, oh, sorry, I, I don't have multiple monitors either. But I was bringing this in. Can you see? It? Can you see that the? Yeah, the layer media types thing. Yeah, yeah, just for for what it was. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, so you're saying the plus WASM over here. Yeah, um, the, the, I guess what I was I was thinking there was um, usually it's like a 
dot wasm file um, and specifying that this is like the, the bytes of the wasm. And then potentially, I don't know if we need to support it, but being able to tar it as well. Um, Sorry, are we talking about the artifact type or the layer type? Let's start with the artifact type, I think. So maybe someone can answer this question. What does artifact type mean? What, Every what time I think I know, I don't quite understand. Yeah. <laughs> Is it referring to the layer, the contents of the layers, or the config, or both combined, or? So this goes to my question that I threw in the agenda, which was, do we even need an artifact type? Um, I would start without even defining the artifact type, and then follow up and say, let's add an artifact type once we know we need it. How would we know that we need it? There is something technically going on that you need a de dedicated artifact type that's separate from the config media type that's separate from the layers. Um, in the case right now, the, the scenario that I'll see in some of my applications where I need an artifact type is because I don't actually have a config media type. There is no JSON I'm pumping into the config media type, so I don't have anything that query on, so I need an extra field in there. Um, in this, you've got a config media type. So I would say for now, start without it. And then if you need it, circle back and then say, okay, we've, we've hit a technical challenge here that we actually need to include this. That'll avoid a whole bunch of discussion on naming things right now, but it would also um, give you a little bit more portability on other registries. Because okay. there are a few registries that'll block it if you have this defined. Are there compatibility concerns with the config media type? You're you're going to get that too, but you're going to get that no matter what we do. And remind me with the OCI specification, we don't artifact type can be null. We don't have to specify that in there. You just wouldn't have the field there at all. It's just like when you push a container image today, they don't have it. Um, I believe okay. Helm charts don't define it. Uh, a lot of stuff just doesn't include it because it's a very new field. We we haven't even really suspect that it includes it. Okay. Yet. Yep. Almost soon. So I think, and, and maybe the config dot media type is going to solve this, but one of the things when we were attempting to kind of highlight this in um, like ACR, or Azure Container Registry um, was like, we didn't like, because we were using config media type of the image layers, like the, the way that we're doing it in RunWazi now, um, we weren't able to identify this thing without going to the layers and saying like, oh, there's some special layers in here. And that's where we thought artifact type might be applicable. But yeah. because but because we have the config.media type, it's we, that'll, that'll signify that it's something different. Um, it, it should. If it doesn't, then we need okay. to talk to ACR, but that should solve it. Okay. Are there considerations around registry indexing where an artifact type would be available as an indexing key and config type wouldn't? Anything along those lines that you're aware of? If you query a registry today and say, give me all the refers, it's the only thing we've got that's even looking at this right now. Um, other than registries add their own UIs and stuff on top of it. If you say, give me everything that has this artifact type, it is supposed to automatically fall through and see that artifact type isn't defined here, but the config media type is, I'm gonna use that value instead. So Thanks. there is supposed to be that fall through in, in the registry definition. Okay. So I think my only other big question about the config media type is whether we want to have one of them or more than one, I guess, for different purposes. And in particular, the differences between a runnable artifact and a development dependency artifact. I, th I think it's simpler if we have one, but and, and maybe specify that inside the JSON that lives in that config. Um, but maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I, I don't know enough about the internals of 
how and this goes right back to my previous question which is do you need to be able to index and filter based on these differences because presumably you cannot generically filter based on the contents of the config that would be a very vendor specific feature so are we are we focusing i'm sorry i'm trying to jump between notes in here are we focusing on the config media type or the layer media type because I feel like config media type, we should probably like maybe talk about that separately next week. But like I was seeing in like top level thing, we get to the whole um, what we were talking about here with like the layers. I was wondering if we can if we should talk about the um, the like if we need different layer types because I feel like it should just be the kind of something along the lines of what we have there now, the wasm dot component dot layer or whatever. Um, I, but I'm not sure if because there's the ion. Uh, are you supposed to say IANA, IANA? I never know what to say with that, honestly. Um, but like the assignment there, we have application slash WASM. Do we need like an application slash WASM plus component kind of thing? Do we need some? Do we need some sort of like modification to start like talking that direction, or do we just use one of these like the vendor ones, like what we have in in the doc right now? I mean, I think that's basically the same discussion. Is what do you need? to be able to determine based entirely on the manifest versus introspecting the config or the actual WASM bytes. Like you can tell from the first four WASM bytes or 10 or whatever, whether it's a component or module. So it's sort of another example of the same question. Like I don't, I don't understand directionally which of these distinguishing bits of information should go into the manifest versus into something that the manifest references. It's not clear to me. Something. I mean, go ahead, Brandon. You're the expert here. I'm not going to talk. <laughs> the, the way that um, we've gotten in trouble before, but the, the way to best explain this is that in each one of these descriptors, and so everything that's got the media type size digest is a descriptor, the media type of that descriptor should reference the media type of whatever that digest is pointing to. And that's where we got in trouble before we started saying, well, let's make the config blob overload it and start using this and someone said, well, what if we had an SPD access bomb that pointed to some XML and the config media type wasn't even the XML at all. It was just an empty JSON thing. We didn't have the data there. And someone said, well, by definition, the scripter needs to have the media type matching whatever the content is that that digest points to. So when we get into, for example, the layers, if your content that that layer points to is an application WASM type of content, that would be a valid media type for your layer. When you're talking about your config, I think you're gonna define your own config JSON, then you're gonna have your own media type for that config. And the yeah, plus I mean, JSON I, at the end is just whatever the content, um, just for parsers. Yeah, I'm wondering if we can do like that extension, like plus whatever, let me, I do have some minds in the room over here. Let me uh, query them shortly as to see if they are actually doing anything for the media type right now. Because if they are, then we'll just leverage that. If not, then I think we need to find something. Because I went to answer your question, Lam, I would like to be able to see from the media type whether it is or isn't a component um, in terms of like selecting something. Um, I know you can then introspect it from there, but I think it'd be good to indicate the difference between a component and a normal WebAssembly module. Um, when when you're like trying to fetch the content because if you're like searching you're like oh I found a wasm thing and it's not a component and that's something you'd want to go like no I don't need that thing. Well, that's it's not really helpful on its it's not usually very helpful on its own because you generally actually care about the world that it implements if it is a component. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like we're not even th this this middle ground we're on is probably the least useful of, of two other options that sit next to it. One is going more generic, calling it application WASM, figuring it out a different way. Uh, and then like any tooling that knows what an application WASM is will know what this thing is. That's kind of helpful. And then on the other end is making a whole bunch of layer types for proxy world and command world and whatever else. Or figuring out a way I... to encode that into one media type. But it's not... No, yeah, you're bringing up a good point. I think that I'm almost leaning towards with that that thinking of like application wasm. We just use that, and then inside of the config media, the actual config stuff, 
inside the config media type, that's the kind of thing where we might be able to pass in like the worlds or whatever, um, and then be able to identify it that way. Cause it does seem cleaner to kind of leverage it cause it's config media. That's why we do have some of these fields in there right now, but that could give us a lot more flexibility. So maybe we just stick with that and call it application wasm since that's well known. And then, and then use the config media types stuff to actually like drill down to what those things might be like the current world, the exports or imports, all those kind of things that you might, might be nice to find through there. Yeah, that's, that's sort of my, my hunch is that that's the easiest way to get compatibility, get broad compatibility with existing OCI code. Uh, but that's based on very little <laughs> at this point. Yeah, let me just double check real quick that they're not planning anything like from the WASI subgroup or whatever to do that. I'm literally going to yell across the room, so give me 10 seconds. Okay, so word from word from on high is that um, the we're the only ones. This group right here is the only ones who's actually doing anything really with the media type right now. So I think if we just stick with application WASM, we'll be fine. There's been like people who've had ideas like, oh, well, there's different versions of WASI and that should be reflected or whatever. But I think like for our purposes, I think we just stick with the generic one and then go down the config media type route to specify it more. So this would look more like this. I don't. <clears throat> uh, Are you uh, sharing the part we're editing here? Let me oh, go back to, okay. Mine, now I went back. You shouldn't need the plus wasm anymore. The plus wasm <laughs> is like this content type doesn't have any specific encoding, or we're using a non-default encoding, or. The plus thing is a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> it's used in a few different ways. Uh, but I, I don't think you need it in this context. OK, and then so currently the I, I, IAN ha doesn't specify that we can put like WASI stuff in this. So do we need to go update that? Or should we or should this be more like dot WASI so that it's specific to the WASI thing and we go create one? I... Are we talking about the, the layer media type? The layer type, yeah, the later layer dot media. If type. if this layer, if the contents of this layer is a WASM binary file, then application WASM is appropriate. As okay. The mm -hmm. type of that layer is, is I believe, my interpretation of what Brandon said. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think we just keep this like application WASM, and then everything's contained inside of the config media type um, for drilling down into what exists, what's there. Um, so, so yeah, well, I think I think that's good. So should we take a note they, to update the I I <laughs> I am. So I think spec. the only the only reason we would need to update the the registration is if we wanted to be able to specify the. Okay, this is confusing. The component model defines a portion of the version field of the WASM binary as the layer. This is a totally different layer, <laughs> but. Uh, if we wanted to be able to specify that or filter on that in the content type, then we should go to the IANA and say, we want to update this. I don't think that that would be a huge deal. It's just like the registrant saying, I want to change it pretty much. Um, but I don't, I don't think we have a use case for needing that just yet. Uh, it's just if we wanted to expose that feature, that would be the, the right approach. Yeah, I think it's added. I think it's fairly easy because it's additive, so that way we're not like breaking anything when we make this a spec that we yeah. want to follow. So I'm, I agree with that. So and then one one last question here is: Would there ever be a scenario where we're going to want to put like put like wrap these into like a tar or something along those lines, um, just to, for compression and size and space and those types of things. I know like in Red Hat, they, they're, they're using 
they're they're just wrapping the wasm in a tar file right now the, the way that they're doing it i don't know if they'll kind of change that with 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 what we're doing here but just opening up that question <clears throat> uh so a tar file itself is not going to compress and you can gzip totally separately from charring and you could just plus gz if you had gzipped your thing you'd still need to you still need to specify that as like a supportable media type um, but i think that's a little bit independent of the media type of sort of the the basic layer type um yeah go ahead brandon yeah i was gonna say i think when we've had these discussions before something from the iana side is that they specifically call out if there's a plus something or other on their register types. So if you're trying to stick to the register type, like the application was, in, um, I think they would want to have that defined on their side as well. Another consideration, and this is going more to OCA implementation compatibility, but this is HTTP. You really should be handling this as transporting coding, not as media type. Now, if the OCI implementations don't support that, then you have to do something else if you want compression, but that's sort of the, the right place to implement it would be in the HTTP implementation. That has been discussed. Um, I, I don't know that all registries support that today. There, there has been a desire to try to move away from what we've been doing with the multiple di digest, one for the compressed, one for the uncompressed, and depending on where you look at it, just leave everything uncompressed and then that would let us support more than just gzip. People wanted to see like bzip and a bunch of other compression types in there and that would solve a lot of those issues. I don't know that registries support that today though. So I think that's something we could maybe take note of and let that be driven by, you know, user requirements. If people really want compression, uh, then it's something we could specify. Um, tarring is, a, I, I don't think that it's necessary for WASM artifacts themselves. Uh, there are some compatibility issues with arbitrary content that tar could solve. Um, I don't know if we want to try to specify here arbitrary content, you know, static files. If, if we don't, then I think we don't need to worry about it too much. If we do, then we may need to specify the static content either must or may be tarred up. I, I don't know exactly how far we want to go down that route. Uh, this is a problem that SPIN has, like some OCI implementations don't support having files smaller than like uh, 10 bytes or something. There's like arbitrary restrictions. And so, or they don't, they don't support having a lot of layers. So you have to batch your things together. Like there's some compatibility issues that might require specification if we go down that route. But WASM files themselves, I don't think, require bundling into a tar. If you have other content that's separate from the WASM file, you might just end up using a standard OCI layer at that point. Yeah, and I guess that's sort of like philosophically what is an artifact and what does the config specify? Uh, if a config doesn't mention a layer, if you just have other layers in there and the config doesn't mention it, like is the config supposed to specify that you can have other layers, like this config spec? D does anything it's, actually care? <laughs> it's all going to come down to the runtime that knows how to parse that manifest when it sees that config media type. Gotcha. So it's I guess if there is a broad requirement for extra artifacts, then we could specify something about them. If there isn't, I mean, spin is going to do it one way or another, uh, but that doesn't mean we have to specify it here. Yeah, I think James, are you are you editing on your screen right here? I just haven't seen it move in a while, and I just wasn't sure oh, for the recording. Am I on the Am I sharing the wrong screen? I don't know what I'm yes. sharing. <laughs> you seeing the config you type. I think yeah. you just scroll to the wrong section. Is all. Um. Yeah, whatever you were just you you just scrolled a little bit, so now you're on the right tab. You've got it in two different windows for some reason or something like that. 
Uh, hold on. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, I had it in two different windows. Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is the, this looks like the screen I'm actually sharing. So I was editing in a different window. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so are we? And is this kind of where we, we landed? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's where we've landed. Um, and then, Brandon, I do have a question. I pulled up the spec just to check. You, it says like, for example, in the media type for layers, it does have like the, like plus tar plus gzip tar plus. Is that just normal? Is something like part of tar, or is that like because you had said like don't do the plus? That's a bad idea. But I wasn't sure. I it's, well, what I was getting was every one of those pluses is a registered mm -hmm. media type in IANA when you're doing register types. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to stick to the register type, you're no longer a register type when you do the plus something. Okay. They, they would want a separate registration to say, we can do this with this extra extension. I, I think that's the way it goes. But yeah, if you look at the image, um, image spec, and I was trying to do bad stuff before while I was doing multiple pluses and other stuff like that. Um, don't go that direction. We've we've got our media types defined in OCI and just pulling that up right now. Just so I'm saying the same stuff. As a familiar and, reference, that's the only valid Helm chart content media type. You can't you're not supposed to use it without the tar G zip. Yeah. Yeah. So there's only one plus on there and then we just had like a dot tar plus G zip. Um, that all predates me. I don't know, good, bad, indifferent. Um, but again, all of those are not registered, so we don't care about trying to make sure that we're sticking with whatever has already been submitted to Diana and previously. Okay. Um, perfect. Just wanted to double check that. Um, so on the config media type, James, I was wondering if we do this one does seem like it should be like a vendor thing. Should it just be like VND dot what like uh, not was I'm sorry, uh, webassembly.config.v0 or I mean, we can do webassembly.wasm. I would, WASM. I would probably config, stick but... with WASI because uh, webassembly, if you're going by organizations, is a much broader group, most of whom are either don't care about or are actively opposed to server side webassembly. There's an actual group for, for WASI. It's, it's a, yeah, a subgroup. Like 90% overlapping with Bytecode Alliance um, or more, but okay. it is a separate group. A little more do, standard Z. <clears throat> do we need to get some buy in from them to use the name? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, this is all going to get run past the people that would care eventually, anyway. Okay. Uh, and then I think so we use that. VND, WASI, and then um, I think what, what's the next part of the description here? Do we need the WASM? Or should this be like dot config? <clears throat> I think this sort of gets into the question of what this thing actually is. Is this a runnable WASI component that we're describing? Is this arbitrary WASM content that we're describing. Uh, if it's the former, then do we need a separate config media type for things that aren't runnable? Sort of getting into that question. Um, this is where we've had that, that discussion about the problem with components is that they can be runnable and also, I mean, technically not runnable they could be meant to be used as a library depending on on the circumstance and how it's being used right because it's really up to the host to determine if it's runnable rather than right because like a host could satisfy all the imports that it needs um and so i mean i i think if, if for me the only differential would be like between something that's a component and something that's not but i i think that everything should just be maybe under a top level wasm type to start and then inside of the actual config, 
that we can define, that's where we could like differentiate between the different things. And then if we needed to in the future, and people are like, no, that's just too confusing. We could add in one that's for plain wasm. I just don't think plain wasm is going to be as common um, with, with components. So like, that's why I just wonder if like, it's just easier to say like, keep it this top level WASI config and then have anything else underneath in the, the config itself. Yeah, and to me, like, it doesn't, like, conceptually make a big difference either way. There's just this technical technical question of, like, the trade-off between compatibility with OCI tooling, including registries, and being able to index on this thing, filter on this thing, whatever. I think that's that's where I don't, I like, I don't have an intuition for how where the ecosystem is with all of these things. Uh, so it's hard for me to really have a strong opinion either way. I mean, that makes me think we just operate with this and then we like this type and then we start defining it and then I think we'll get the feedback for it. I think that's the easiest thing to do. Um, and, and just just see what happens. I mean, I think just having that there and then having the discussions um, will be good enough. Um, the only other thing in the top level manifest, I was just wondering, are there any types of like standard annotations we wanted to define or might need to define, um, for people to add additional data or do we not, we can also say, man, we don't care right now. We'll define it later. I just wanted to ask, cause that's another one of those things that sometimes people have questions about. My assumption is you probably define them later unless there's something the runtimes need to be able to change their configuration right now. Um, Lan, is there anything like that would be helpful, you know, for any of the work stuff that we should have around in there, do you know? I am not familiar enough with annotations to even really understand how they fit into the system. Um, it's just arbitrary use... data you can tack on there. Like the ones that are in there right now, it's like, you have things like authors and URL of where to find things and like the version of the package software. Like those are the kinds of like, it's just additional data that you can, you can throw on there that might help out, especially when it comes to, you know, like indexing, thing, like custom indexing, especially around Word or whatever, where it might need to like have that, that data stored around. I'm okay waiting. I just brought it up because I know that there might be some needs um, around that. So I just wanted to ask. Yeah, it's it's a string string map, so you can yep. define any key equals any value, and an example use case might be, hey, for runtimes, execute this knowing that it has components in it, or run this knowing that there's some tweak in there that's different from other runtimes, so it needs to configure some setting in there. That would be the stuff I'll look at now. And are those annotations? standardized? Are they registered somewhere? Are they freeform? The recommendation we give is to use a reverse DNS syntax so that things are under your organization's name and not conflicting with others. And then we have some that are pre-configured under OCI that are very generic in terms of who's the author, the source URL, things like that. Okay, then it sounds like there's no urgent need to specify those immediately. They're sort of independent of manifest format in general. It's just, it is an option we have for certain kinds of metadata if we needed to, as, are these read only, are these, uh, are these indexed? Do we know annotations? So when you start dumping them on a registry, the registry could index them. I don't think many of them do, but when you get into the refers API, registries must pull them up and there is a threat from registries that if you start stuffing too much data in there, they will start rejecting your manifest because they can't pull that up into the refers response without blowing out some size limits when they package a whole bunch of these together. So use them responsibly. Makes sense. Okay. So not indexed, but a little bit size sensitive for other reasons. Got it. Um, this V0, so, should, should, do we want to call it V0, V1, or do we need this? I think I pulled it from, <clears throat> like, the examples on the... 
pretty I much think everything on OCI should. has done that, knowing that you might change it later on. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Brandon just said what I was thinking. Yeah, I would, I just know that we're likely to change it as things evolve. So I think starting with a V0 is probably a good idea. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the manifest now. So I'm going to have to drop a little early anyway. And I think we tried to dive into the config media type definition that's longer than we have. So I personally and somewhat selfishly would like to suggest we call it here. Um, and then next meeting we'll come and try to dig into the config uh, media type definitions. Um, does that sound okay to people? Looks me. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop yeah. sharing. Uh, this has been really helpful. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Hopefully, I, I think we'll get through this pretty quick. This is a good, a good discussion today. So. Yep. Thanks. See you. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.